neighbor cat's trying to get in, trying to get the attention of people inside. This is chapter three. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It only, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her, so she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who said was with her and he ate it too. At that moment their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden, so they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, have, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she said, replied. That's, what I, that's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and in pain you will give birth and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you. Though you will eat of its grains, by the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you are made, for you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Cat's still trying to get in the window. Or looking in the window. Let me in. Paradise Lost, God's Judgment. Then the man, Adam, named his wife Eve because she would be the mother of all who live. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. Then the Lord God said, look, the human beings have become like us, knowing good and evil. What if they reach out, take fruit from the tree of life, and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord God stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the garden, of Eden, and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. That's pretty cool. A flaming sword just floating there on fire, flashing back and forth over the entrance, and then the cherubim. I'm assuming there's two of them. Okay, so if it's the beginning of the world, one question I have just off the top of my head. Nobody knew what a sword was, right? I mean, in the Garden of Eden. I mean, you don't, I guess you don't know what happened. Maybe Adam created the sword 
I mean, they didn't say how, you know, what a sword was yet. I mean, I guess Moses is maybe writing this in post. You know, we all know what a sword is, but it was the beginning of the world, so no one knew what a sword was, right? I don't know. Like, where do you even get the reference from a sword? Maybe swords are in heaven, like God came up with the sword and, you know, the cherubim just had a sword. I mean, there was a sword floating and on fire. So I guess there was one at the very, very, very beginning of time. So I'm thinking like the snake was an upright being with arms and legs and um, before he got cursed by God for deceiving Eve to eating the fruit because then God said, you know, because you did this, deceive the woman, I'm gonna make you crawl around on your belly. So did God change the serpent to look more like a snake that we know of? And was, so I'm thinking like a snake man. <laughs> I just think of all the like muscles of like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and like a snake head and like arms and legs and he's like, hey, he's and he can talk, that's another thing. A talking serpent man, <laughs> that's what I want to think it is. And um, then God's like, well, sorry, I'm gonna curse you. And so he turns into a snake on the ground. Did God know that we were going to be in this position of a fallen state, did he rhetorically, like, I mean, he's omnipotent, omnipresent. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows everything that's going to happen to you and to me, right? <laughs> so did he know that this was all going to go down like that, even though he asked these questions like, what, what have you done? <laughs> How do you know that you were naked? This is more of a statement. The serpent was the first marketing strategist in the way he manipulated Eve to eat the fruit. He distracted her by intentionally misunderstanding the rules and saying, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Now that serpent knew that if he could distract her with misinformation, he could more effectively assert his will onto her. This is literally the oldest trick in the book. She fell for his bag of tricks, hook, line, and sinker, and was willing to ignore what God had originally said in lieu of this new information, just like every commercial intends to do. Every bit of marketing and advertisement is aimed at convincing you of something, whether it's true or not. Sometimes it's not good for you, but they make it seem like it is, and this came from Genesis chapter 3. Another thing I noticed about Genesis 3 is that I'm reading it in this, um, this is uh, called a book. <laughs> we used to use these to get information. I mean, I haven't read from an actual flesh and blood paper made book for like two years, two, three years. I've just been reading on the iPad. You can't look good for my eyes, but um, kind of gave me a different perspective. Like the whole crux of, I mean, we needed salvation <laughs> from when Eve ate the fruit and everything. And without Genesis 3, the whole, I mean, we wouldn't have needed Jesus to come as our Savior later to get us you know, good begging the question why what happens to people when they die in the Old Testament you know they must have some like way of processing souls before the time of Jesus you know what happened when people would die in Moses time it's the Bible can be confusing sometimes that's all I got for right now that's my video Hope you enjoyed it. I hope that cat gets inside. <laughs> and um, 
if you need any prayer, put it in the comments. I will pray for you. I, you know, you can like and subscribe, but put your prayer request in the comments. I will pray for you. I'll make sure that my family prays for you. But all you got to do is comment. And you don't have to put details. Just say, please pray for this issue or whatever. I'll pray for it. All right. Have a good day. Daddy is speaking from the sky. <laughs> Okay, I better, I'm not going to milk this.